Okay, section 17.4 deals with the titration of weak acids and weak bases. And uh, if you're titrating a weak acid, that means that your analyte is a weak acid, you will want to use a strong base as a titrate. And if you're titrating a weak base, your analyte is a weak base, you'll want to use a strong acid as a titrate. Uh, if both of them are weak, your analyte and your titrant are both weak, then well, that just adds all sorts of complexity. So whatever your uh, analyte is, make sure you have a strong titrant to react with it. And I just left all this up from our previous section because the same uh, principles apply. You'll have some end point where you stop the titration. That will be based on either a pH measurement or a um, uh, color indicator. But uh, that end point is not um, going to be perfectly equivalent to the equivalence point. The equivalence point is where you actually have equal moles of analyte and titrant added. Um, it is a ideal, it is a mathematical, theoretical ideal, and um, we use the idea of the equivalence point to construct our formula here. And um, that formula says that at equivalence, our moles of analyte equals the moles of titrant that have been added. Your moles of analyte are that unknown concentration times the carefully measured volume of analyte you start with. And then the moles of titrant is its carefully characterized concentration times the volume that you add to reach that equivalence point. Um, and in practice, we'll put in the endpoint volume because that's the best we can do in the lab. But as far as our equations, for now we'll talk in terms of uh, that theoretical equivalence point. Uh, now, um, the titration curve for uh, weak acids and weak bases is uh, quite a lot different than the titration curve for strong acids and strong bases. When a strong acid and a strong base react, let's suppose I have hydrochloric acid and I'm adding sodium hydroxide, then that's going to produce water and a ionic compound, uh, sodium chloride, which has no acid base uh, activity. And so uh, we can count on the pH being based on either just the amount of HCl left over or the amount of hydroxide that was added in excess. And it's just a regular simple pH problem. Well, if I titrate a weak acid, uh, let's say I'm titrating um, HClO2 uh, with NaOH, then what I'm going to get as a product is water, but uh, this time I'll get Na plus and ClO2 minus. And these two make up a conjugate acid-base pair. Uh, and that's going to uh, mean that uh, in order to find the pH, we'll need to rely on the equilibrium between these two species. We can use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation to make that a little bit easier, but it certainly is a step harder than just a strong acid with a strong base. So let's look at how uh, it actually looks on the curve. So here we have a, a weak acid being titrated with a strong base. Um, it's not very apparent on this curve, but one interesting feature is that um, at this region at the beginning, will sometimes show a bit of a shoulder. There will be a bit of curvature here, at, um, concave downward. And so there's actually a, um, a, curvature, a curvature inflection point right here in the middle. Um, and <clears throat> you know what? This is not the right figure titration of a weak acid with a strong base, and now that I look at it, uh, that is a, a weak, a strong acid with a strong base. So I'm going to actually skip to the next figure. I guess this, 
this is a slideshow that uh, I downloaded from Macmillan. And um, anyway, I, I wanted to focus on just one curve, but I'll, I'm going to move on to the next one because that was actually really problematic. It was showing the strong acid, which uh, did not have a, any shoulder, um, markedly so. Uh, and its equivalence point has a pH of 7 because it's perfectly neutral. Well, if I have a weak acid titrated with a strong base, well, here you do see there's a bit of curvature. And here we've shown characteristic curves for an acid that's on the strong side of the weak acids and an acid which is on the weak side of the strong acids. And you'll notice that for that particularly weak acid, uh, the shoulder or the curvature here um, at the beginning is particularly pronounced. And then um, over the course of the titration, what we have uh, in this region is a certain amount of the conjugate acid that's left over and a certain amount of the conjugate base that has been generated through reaction with the uh, sodium hydroxide titrant. And so uh, what is it when you have both the acid and base of a conjugate uh, pair present? It's a buffer solution. And so we can actually calculate the expected pH based on the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. And when we're at exactly halfway to the equivalence point, then we have converted exactly half of our, um, uh, we, we will have converted exactly half of our acid into base. And at that point, the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation says that the pH is equal to the pKa. Uh, for this uh, darker blue acid here, the pKa would be 4, and that's where the um, pH is at halfway to equivalence. For this lighter blue curve with a Ka of 10 to the negative 8th, the pKa would be 8, and that's where we see, um, and that's where we see uh, that curve is at halfway to equivalence. And then here at the equivalence point, um, you'll notice that they all have different um, uh, pHs. Uh, if you think about both the beginning and the ending points here, uh, they're both going to require an ice table. For the strong acid, we could just take the negative log of the acid concentration. But for a weak acid, uh, you need to use an ice table to solve for the pH of a weak acid. Uh, over here, at equivalence point, we have completely converted our weak acid into its conjugate weak base. And so again, we can use an ice table, and this time we'll be using ice table for the conjugate base and its Kb value in order to predict the pH uh, at the equivalence point. If I have a, a relatively strong uh, example of a weak acid, then its conjugate will be pretty weak and that pH at equivalence will be closer to 7. If I have a very particularly weak acid, then its conjugate base will be stronger and that pH will be pushed upward. You know, even above 10 in this case, the pH at the equivalence point can stray quite far from 7. Um, and then uh, beyond the equivalence point, again, this is where we've added an excess amount of strong base. And basically, immediately, just one drop beyond the equivalence point, all that weak acid, weak base chemistry becomes pretty irrelevant. And it's just that excess amount of strong base that you've added to your solution that governs the pH from that point onward. Uh, here we have a weak base being titrated with a strong acid. Again, we, we can see there's a, um, a bit of a shoulder here. In order to calculate the pH at point A, we would need to use an ice table with the Kb value of the, um, of the weak base. Uh, here we're in the buffer region, and at halfway toward equivalence, we would ex expect the pH to equal the pKa. Now, we'll use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation just like before. We don't need to switch anything to account for the fact that we've got a base titrated with a strong acid. Uh, we'll just start with um, 
high ratios of base over acid and end with low ratios of base over acid, whereas with the acids we started with low ratios of base over acid and ended with high. Uh, so at a glance here, we could guess that the pKa for this particular um, weak base, weak acid conjugate pair uh, is going to be around, I don't know, 9.5. Uh, we can just at a glance make a good guess about the pKa value. Then here for C, we've completely converted that weak base into its conjugate acid and we would use an ice table to calculate the uh, pH there. And then um, uh, here beyond the equivalence point, this is where we've added an excess amount of strong acid. Um, and um, uh, and uh, we would just have to consider how many Moles of strong acid have we added in excess, divided by the total volume to get the concentration and turn that into a pH. Uh, now for both of these, um, uh, it can be a little bit difficult to identify that equivalence point, especially as you get into particularly weak uh, acids or bases. Um, but we will define that equivalence point uh, as the point where the pH uh, has its steepest increase. And so if I had all of this data in Excel, I could maybe take the, um, uh, the slope between every pair of points and um, wherever that slope reaches a maximum, that would be the equivalence point. And um, here, titrating a weak base with a strong acid, we would want to look for the slope that uh, where the slope is the most negative. It's the steepest slope, only this time it's sloped downward. So I guess we'd be technically looking for a minimum, but the largest magnitude slope right there. And then uh, one final point, many of our um, weak acids or bases are diprotic or even triprotic. So if I had a diprotic acid, take for example uh, H2, uh, CO3, carbonic acid, um, and I add some base to it, well, um, there's going to be this first region here, which represents the reaction of H2CO3 with my titrant to produce HCO3 minus, and the, uh, the pKa uh, for that pair looks like it's something like 2.5. But then HCO3 minus can then go on and react with the sodium hydroxide a second time uh, to produce CO3 2 minus. And so what you'll see is two equivalence points. They ought to be consistent with each other. Um, in this chart, they've been drawn to be consistent with each other. And we can use uh, one half of equivalence here to estimate pKa1 and then one half of the second equivalence point, or one half of the way between the first and second equivalence point to estimate pKa2, which is looking to be just a bit above seven. Um, and uh, so that is how multiprotic uh, acids and bases work. Okay, and again, we have a very substantial quiz that's going to explore all of the math behind this. I, I think titrations are actually not uh, a terribly difficult or even novel idea for you, especially with the um, 1225 uh, vitamin C lab already doing a titration for you. But in the quiz, um, we'll get into um, a lot more detail than perhaps you're expecting and you'll see that uh, even this simple idea of a titration can create um, quite a big headache if you're trying to be very careful and very precise with it. So um, make sure you watch those videos for the quizzes.